Hello and welcome back, everyone. We are here with our fifth game of the night, of the evening, depending on whatever time zone you are in. Iona College versus Knipiak. Sir Waltham and Dryad at it once again. Dryad, this time the uh, score lines aren't so equivalent. Knipiak up 1-0 versus Iona, down 0-1. Yeah, there isn't that much of a difference again because we had just started, but you don't want to continue getting those losses for any of the teams or even get your first loss for one of them for Iona. So a lot of stake here just to try to stay on top of the table as all the scores and all the, the who is going to be the top starts to settle in. And a lot of pressure for those two teams, two teams that we already know as well. It's like one of them from that last match. But this two coming up to be more much more familiar and with that also the same familiarity with the compositions that we might be seeing from them yeah compositional i guess uh creativity between these two teams always going to be an interesting standpoint but looks like we're ready to get right into it not too much time to elaborate on that one dryad we're gonna be starting off on ilios uh, i guess more technically we're gonna be starting off the helm of the ship yeah absolutely so it is, all goes back to why we saw the same map Order. And this is something I do like to see because teams are better able to prepare for every single map and decide what composition that they, they want to bring to the table. We saw on the last match a level dive coming through being effective, even the Reinhardt being a possibility. But nonetheless, for Iona and Kunipia for the second match that we get to cast, it is going to be the double bubble that we haven't seen yet today. I like this look coming in from Iona, but we'll see if it provides them the benefit. Once again, Mane is going to be coming out with a nice headshot right onto Sam X, starting this fight off in a very good way for Knipiak. Now Iona going to be having the awareness that they need to keep out of these lines of sight. The rest of the team for Knipiak going to be looking to barrel in, get this damage done right out of the gate. And Scooty looking to use that Lucio to some degree, keeping the healing up, not being too emphasized on speed here. Going to get stunned out, but... Just avoiding enough damage to crank that heal and get themselves out just in time. Can't save Firewolf, but it looks like this fight will still be saved. If I will be going for the setup, can you give as they take control of the point, as they start to get those ultimates as well? With the Widow Baker, we talked about it here in, in Ruins. There is always the possibility to see this Widow, but it hasn't been as relevant ever since the Hitscans got nerfed. Still good to see Main is bringing it in and getting a couple kills as well as the rest of the team. We'll see if Iona allows themselves to fall prey to that same route once again. Grub with the pulse bomb, sticks it out. However, just going to be hitting all projected barrier coming in from Maj. And now Grub has to be very careful here, getting run down by that Zarya player. Able to get out with their life still intact, but Maj not going to be quite as lucky. Rockley going to be taking them down, and Manes has those infrasites online ready to cut out anybody who pokes her head just a bit too far. You like seeing this from Widowmakers, you like seeing them change their positions, and you like seeing that perhaps from Winston's the primal rage kill going out onto Milky Way, and then the chase onto Manes. It's going to be Oblivion's not quite able to get out with their life, but still coming in with a kill all their own. Now it's going to be Ziggs G going to be coming out with the High Noon, taking down one, making a double as Firewolf goes down, and the point gets flipped. Yeah, once again, the kills keep coming back and forth, and the Prima Rage coming through was really effective to get rid of that Widowmaker, though. As I say, the Widowmaker for the Cinemain is, is back. Does get the kill into the Ana, takes control of the fight again. 62% for Knipia. They need to be able to take it back, and they already have the first kill to start it off. Majin has grab online, but the question is, will they be able to use it? They've already lost two members for the side of Iona. That Winston Barrier falls right as the Diva Bomb destructs Milky Way, able to get one and then another with a quick follow-up. Broccoli going to be taken down by Tyre, and Sam X going to be finished off. And right now, Iona in a rough spot. A rough spot as that 70% does not look good for the side of Iona. They have a lot of pressure to try to make something happen here. There's going to be the Graviton to use along with the Amplification, but that is only going to create space. And if you have also happened to have a really good Eva that might be trying to eat this ultimate. And Sanji playing a little bit recklessly there, trying to out-snipe a Widowmaker by peeking the same angle as Ana. That's going to be an amazing surprise that it didn't quite uh, get them killed in that instance. But so far, Iona College is going to be bringing a few surprises, getting the point flipped, and then immediately trying to push onto Knipiak's team, who just immediately back out and decide to regroup. 
And the, the fights, they keep coming back and forth. That is exactly what I'd like to see here in Ilias. Now, it's all about Iona Ecology trying to take control for a little bit longer to hold control. And that is going to be, with the amplification, already getting the Lucian no speed for the side of Knipia. And that is going to be mass for them to keep holding here. Now, and it as, is... we... Oh. as we see here, Grub going to slowly be looking around in those back lines for any opening that may be relieved. If Manes can't find it in the front, Grub might be able to find it in the side or back. The tank's going to be punching this Iona College team in the face. High Noon trying to come out from Sizz. Not going to quite be able to find too much. Firewolf throwing in the Primal Rage, able to get one with it. And right now, Knipiak just trying their best to claw back anything, and they need to here. Iona College has the 97%, 98 99 with this Neta boost on Dimash and not gonna quite be enough it seems. For the good answer here as well coming through in the middle wall that fight guaranteeing that it was going to go for this team. They are able to take it back 99 to almost at 99 again. And that's where the changes start to come through is going to be of aliens coming through on the wrecking ball. See that attack visor coming out from Sam X, but immediately gets cut down. It's gonna have to be Oblivion's just trying to make some sort of final touch, but that's gonna be very hard with Manny's Still at such a distance, a threat that can't even be dealt with given the amount of pressure that needs to be held on this point. No such doing for Myona Knipiak. Gonna be able to get the first point here on Ruins, but a very close match. Looking really close so far, but we have to see how close it really is as we come into the second and potential third here in Helios. Again, a lot of possibilities for the teams. I love seeing the double bubble. I love seeing the dive style and the many changes that both of the teams are able to bring to the table. But there's a lot of mistakes that are happening when it comes to who is initiating each fight. They're waiting a little bit too long. And that is why the point kept going back and forth because no one that was holding the point was just effectively initiating a fight and guaranteeing that win. Also, I feel like Mayonnaise, when we were able to see them on the Widowmaker, was insane. Definitely made a difference oh, yeah. to control that space. Probably will continue to do so now with the hands up. Oh, I definitely have to agree here. Keep eyes out, though, as we look towards our next map. Gonna be well. Huge opportunity for that crowd control to play a giant factor in this match. The Hog, the Orissa, the Lucio, all gonna be coming in here, missing everything, or having everything, but that Fara. Goody gonna be trying to keep their team alive, make sure that there's no Lucio trickery going on to the opposing team. Gets flashed out, almost taken down by Sizz. Not gonna quite be the case though, as Oblivion's yanks Grub into the pit. Things are starting off very action-packed here. Immortality Field coming out from Knipiak. Not the same for Iona because of that Krev is going to be falling, but so far it doesn't look like it ensures the victory for either one of these teams yet. Iona takes up that first initial point presence, but it cost Oblivion's life. Broccoli just trying to stay on that high ground, funneling healing into their team, and it looks like it pays off despite the initial 10% given over to Iona. Only a little bit of percentage. It's not going to be too much that the team can really benefit from a slowly Knipia. It's trying to take control once again of the fight, but it's taking a little too long. 20% already for Ion. And finally, the control that Knipia was waiting for is happening. With a really strong composition to continue to hold this. And we're going to see Knipiak continue to take this fight to Iona. They're not going to wait on point. They're going to push up a little bit. We're seeing the kills come through. Oblivion's now going to have to wait for that full respawn to come online. And that's going to be risky in terms of the time bank. Majin looking to lead in just a little bit, but has to back up. They don't have the health pools for this. Instead, they're just going to chuck that self-destruct in, trying to find anything. Finds nothing instead. Another hook on the Sanji, and Iona just keep getting caught out. They have no shields to block these hooks. Milky Way actually going to have that whole hog interrupted, and Mephiak looking to lean into this. Still not letting anybody up, not letting up off the gas. Scrub taking down another, and Iona College are making some headway, but they're having to commit all their ultimates, and they still haven't won this fight. They're trying to deal with this Hanzo, trying to deal with this Baptiste, who drops an amplification matrix of their own. Will it be enough? Yeah, that is the question, right? For every ultimate that we see, is it going to be enough? Is it going to be Kniep? They're still taking control of the point, holding this point, and not letting it go. As one by one, Iona's trying to touch, trying to get some pressure into point, but they're getting taken down. 
I don't know what happened with Grub there. They may have gone for the combat roll and just whisked themselves off into the pit. Either way, not going to matter too much for the side of Knipiak. They're going to come away with this defense still. That is the thing, though. Is going to be Knipiak able to continue to hold this point, to continue to take control to that 80% already? Now, Yana, they definitely feel desperate now. This is a situation where they've changed their heroes a couple of times nothing has really worked out not even the soul team is and that is because they're pushing one by one gonna have to be way more organized from the side of iona and they have a good opportunity to start here they've taken down mayonnaise and hanzo not gonna have the old the time to build up those ultimates oh. milky way getting boot getting hooked into the pit <laughs> but then booped away by the lucio sanji having anti-synergy with oblivions they're gonna be pinching <laughs> themselves for that one but another hook on oh. the milky way this one finally achieves the slam dunk and with that, it looks like Iona College are able to push their defending team away, winging for the time being. Grub, however, almost getting the high noon off, not going to quite be making it. Mayonnaise returning fire with a dragon strike coming through. Oblivion's trying to knock people off the edge, trying to make it happen. Our observer's just freaking out. There's so much action to have to follow here, Dryad. Yeah, Oblivion is just going crazy with his tails, with those hooks, oh. trying to connect even more. There's a fight potentially going for Zarakinip. Yeah, lost only because of Oblivion was doing so much. Sure, it was a little bit of the anti-synergy going on. Oh. But they managed, just, they managed to stay on top and to continue connecting those hooks. And that is guaranteeing Ayana to continue to hold the point as well for a little bit longer, passing the 50%. But nonetheless, there's a long way to go. You see Iona with a few ultimates, most notably this um, this amplification matrix is going to force Knipiak back and away. They know that Iona College probably not going to push too far ahead. Just allow that opportunity for the amplification matrix to dissipate. Majin now holding shield steady. It's going to be an amplification matrix on the side of Knipiak now, but one member down, make it two members. Now, as we look ahead, Iona College looking to be in a very good spot. Although with this sound barrier, might give Knipiak the breath of life that they needed. Scooty trying to make something happen. Sis gonna now be leaning in with that Reaper right into the chest of Firewolf. Will they be able to find anything? Grub with the flashbang, the hammer. It's a little bit of a spammy concept, but it's gonna be getting Knipiak the kills. Majin, Oblivion's having to hide behind the shield. If Oblivion drops by in front of that shield, it will cost them their life. And point so close to flipping, but Iona College once again taking this to the brink. All the way until the end, this team is fighting to stay on the fight, but it is not going to happen anymore. Can you up? You're able to clean up those kills towards the end. Everyone trying to jump in, but it's not going to be effective one by one. It seems like that is going to be it for the setup at Yona College, at least on this map. Does not look great. It's going to be the Wrecking Ball just trying to survive by as much time as possible, but those dragons are going to make it painful for anyone to cross and then... None shall pass. Knipiak going to be taking the victory here. Iona College now down in this matchup. That was really close, though. Definitely a lot closer to the last match that we had the opportunity to see. A massive difference of the fight. Going back and forth and really making a difference. You think Oblivion? This was definitely one of the best maps for him to play. Sure, he wasn't able to win here. But the kills that he was able to get, I mean, look at that. It was whole hockey. It was just hooks connecting every single time. Guaranteeing that the team was going to have some stake in that fight that was almost over before that happened. Yeah, absolutely. A couple of shining stars for a moment on the side of Iona, but it was just not quite enough to overcome the hurdles that Knipiak was putting through. And we saw both these maps, or at least the, the two maps we saw, Ruins and Well, go pretty high up there. I can quite recall if Well went to 99, 99 exactly, but it was still up high 90s versus 99. Yeah, yeah, and it's, again, it is looking really close to that over 90% and the 100% really showing that the teams were able to play a lot of different heroes, a lot of different compositions. I mean, just to talk about the DPS, we saw a lot of changes from Ruins to the next map and potentially to the next map that we're actually going into where there's a lot more possibilities to keep seeing heroes, the, the hits can make a difference in Blister World. Same thing as the last map, you have the possibilities to take the high ground, so the Hansel is always a possibility. It worked out essentially uh, in a very effective way for the side of Iona, but now they have to make it so that those scales guarantee the win of the map. Absolutely, as you can see on this map display screen, Blizzard World will be our next to go. And you mentioned it right there, Dry had a lot of opportunity for a couple of different compositions to come through. We mentioned the double bubble coming through on Ruins. 
for one of these teams. And I'm curious to see if it shows its head once again on this matchup. I hope so, because they, if they already show it in Ruins, which is not a defined map for the double bubble, I feel like mm -hmm. on Blizzard World, that is more of a defining map for this composition to come through and to be effective. Again, not guarantee, especially because on the defense, you can play something like a double shield and get away with it because you're able to hold so much space and so much territory away from the enemy team that they're never, never able to catch up. But if you're attacking, and if you play the bubble bubble, you know how to engage with your tanks, then that is essentially probably the best composition you can run with. Yeah, I absolutely have to agree with you there. And now, Triad, I want to put you on the spot a little bit and ask what we might expect. At least I would. We weren't already getting right into the game and the hero select was, well, right in front of us. Yeah, it is going to be right away. There's no time for this team to talk that much. They were probably have decided what they want to play as we see them all locking in those heroes especially for the defense and start to go in the junkrat and the soldier i think that is an interesting pick coming from the set of bayona shore you're going to have the poke damage coming through with the junkrat and that is going to be a lot of damage as well going to the shield but it's not the best composition i feel like for the dps that you can play in this map yeah, it does seem like it has a little bit of its weaknesses. We'll see if Knepiak is going to be able to exploit any of those weaknesses. We see Mayonnaise on this Widowmaker, just trying to perhaps find some of those entry openings. Going to be anticipating most of the members of Iona on that high ground, so perhaps waiting for the t attention to divert before revealing themselves. We'll be throwing a couple of shots in, not too many, though. Grub, perhaps caught out by Sam X on that Junkrat, taken down almost immediately with, looks like, the Trap and the Concussion Mine. Now with this Iona College going to be leading in a little bit here, but not getting too far ahead of themselves. A nice late kill on the mayonnaise. Yeah, a couple kills. Their one single kill is going to be enough to guarantee that small, tiny buy that we saw at the beginning. A couple changes are going to come through as a single change actually coming through mayonnaise. Going from the Widowmaker to the hand, so definitely a lot more effective, especially to break the shields happening in the high ground right now. It is... One of the best pokes compositions that you can go with, and one of the best heroes as well to get this happen. And if you're Knipiak, you have to be very careful taking that entryway. You have the anti-nades that can happen. You have the junk rat pills. You have the soldier rockets, as we saw, eventually dismantling this team. Knipiak really struggling to, now that they are on point, maintain it. We see the junk rat getting taken down. Sam X going to be providing a little bit of a breath here for Knipiak, but still not out of the woods yet. That diva gets ejected in. Maybe a little bit of the stall coming out. It does look like it. A couple more kills coming through for this team. Looking really good so far. Again, this is why the double the double shield composition can be so effective on the defense. You're able to control so much space, especially on the high ground. And if you're losing the high ground, you can always back up. You can always take a little bit more control as well. It does seem like we have a disconnect though. Yeah, if I remember correctly, or if I read it correctly, it's going to be for one of the supports from Knipiak. It looks like it was a disconnect i believe it was cookie uh, on that support play so an unfortunate position for knipiak uh, iona college gonna have the leg up there as we talk about it means that that support player is gonna have to come back from spawn zero old charge an unfortunate spot to be yeah absolutely not the best situation to happen when you have a disconnect again because you said you're not able to come back is exactly where you stop where your internet stopped working but more that like all the way back in spawn and see what you can do with it as well as resetting those ultimates i don't think it's going to affect them too much but definitely affecting them a little bit more because this map and this first point more than anything is all about building that momentum and taking it to second and to third point especially for the attackers so now they just have to wait a little bit longer for that yeah, and while we have a moment here, Dryad, I want to talk about so far what we've seen from Knipiak and Iona in terms of their interactions with these compositions, right? Knipiak, they have that tracer, perhaps runs into a mine, or runs into a, a trap, gets mined. That's a rough first fight loss. You lose a Widowmaker on the way out, but that's that's no big surprise. What I was a little bit more surprised of is that they were still running through those smaller hallways to get to point. I understand it exposes you less on the long lines of sight, but I wonder... Does Knipiak have a greater plan for dealing with that Junkrat on the high ground? We're going to see as we are getting word that the fight is going to be taking place once again. We yeah, see. and I mean, even this McCree, though, it is going to be difficult to get any sort of value. Even breaking the shield seems like an mission impossible. 
Yeah, Sam X providing a little bit of insurance right there, dropping the trap, making sure that anybody who dives up there is going to be having a rough time. And Grub taking a little bit of a nap in the middle of a battlefield. It's not where you want to do that, my friend. Definitely not where you want to do that as the Anacology keep having a really good defense to the point where there's one minute 40 seconds remaining for Kniepev on this attack. Still trying to figure out what to do. They do have the Nana to initiate the fight, but they're not able to get oh. close enough to the enemy. And that is the main issue that they have here. Interestingly enough, Iona Call is just using these junk rat traps, perhaps for a little bit of a read. It's going to be the attack Visor coming out. Manny's not perfectly behind the shield of Firewolf. They will be taken down. It is who gets taken down next with the fan, the oh. hammer grub, following it up with two kills from the high noon. It's going to be coming out here, but Sam X perhaps returning fire with a tire. As we look ahead, Iona College not quite out of this. That Reinhardt dropping late might have provided a little bit of relief, although once again, we're seeing the tank versus tank battle. And two diff very oh. different tanks as well. The Diva loses mech, a little bit more control. Everyone from the set of trying to get back in point. And it's the Diva essentially alone, getting a little bit of support at the end, but pretty much alone being able to take control of this. And without Ayana, they have to back up. They have to take this high ground. They're certainly going to be trying here, although they are still stuck a little bit on that lower ground. It is going to be enough time for Milky Way to get that mech reactivated, get it back online. And that means that they can use it to dislodge this team once again. Looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. Pylon taking place. Sanji Majin both taken down. That is the tank and support gone for this Iona College team. It's going to be hard to recover from this, especially when you lose that dominant position. Absolutely. It gets more and more difficult, especially in the second point. The minute that you lose your momentum on the defense, it's really hard to take control again because the enemy is going to be controlling that high ground. And you have Milky Way on the diva as well. It gets a lot harder for this team. The, the composition is essentially completely different for the teams, but it is the attackers that are able to make theirs work the best. Attacker is so far not continuing to hold that pylon position. We hear that turbocharger coming out from Maj and Sam X can be using it, getting the kill onto Grub. And now the tanks from Knipiak wisely decide to take a step back, allow themselves a moment of breathing, at least until the turbocharger drops. But that does give Iona College the temporary opportunity to get some more high ground. We see Sam X with another tire here in just a moment. Those tires have been so effective. I loved seeing that last one on that first point. Ideally, looking forward to do the same here because there's not a lot of protection to go with. And we see Sam X continuing to hide away, knowing that this team is rather clustered up. They have the opportunity. Takes down the yep. Lucio and the Soldier. Looks like Lucio may have just been a little bit of collateral damage. Now Firewolf slowly getting surrounded. Tries to make a dive for it, but eventually loses their life. Not going to be effective enough, and the payload it starts to and it continues to move back. Nipiaf University, they have been doing so well until now, where they don't have a lot of time remaining. They had a really good flux of ultimates, but now look at that, they're getting taken on one by one, affecting the momentum for the team that they definitely need here need to maintain that momentum you're absolutely right but it's gonna be a struggle now that they've been stopped a little bit i believe in two fights by iona college we're gonna continue to push up towards this high ground it's gonna be tough though i have to worry about sam x and now with this gravitic flux coming in soldier has that tack visor on high might have backfired just a little bit two taken down both dps using their ultimates mayonnaise finding a little bit more for it however is now going to be throwing an attack visor of their own able to find one and this is not the first time we've seen these fights come down to bare bones dryad yeah it is definitely not the first time but the payload like it continues to move it's getting really close and this is where the defense they start to become even more aggressive than we saw before look at that getting aggressive enough that it forces the kneecap to go all the way back but the shatter though the Shatter does relieve a little bit of pressure that Knipiak was feeling, but with Manes taking a nap, it means they can't quite follow up on it as aggressively as they would want. Firewolf eating an anti-nade, eating an accretion, then next going to be trying to pin onto that Sigma, isolating them in that small room. An excellent opportunity. Knipiak can carry forward and potentially get this cart delivered to third, but oh no, Ooh. another rip tire on the field. It's going to be taken down without getting too much damage onto the side of Knipiak. We do see that Junkrat playing up above. Has to be very careful, though. Eventually not taken down. Sam X trying to play from behind. That cart does make it the second, but only a minute and a half left. Nipiak, they make it happen towards the end. It was very risky, but they get those kills. 
right when they needed you. And that was a really good job as well for the DPS. I'm still hesitant to see the soldier being played, but it has worked out so well. Allowed them to take down uh, the Wrecking Ball more than anything. And that is one of the series that can delay the payload the most. And he made that stop, and now they have this corner as a challenge. We see Iona getting really aggressive, making sure they maintain this corner. They don't want to give that positioning up for free. Although we are seeing a little bit of the back off. Mana is using Attack Visor to mash that of Sizji. But now as we look ahead, Sizji able to take down Firewolf, who perhaps getting a bit too aggressive. Oblivion's has to receive Majin's projected barrier just to prevent themselves from, from that loss of healing. Diva Bomb goes nowhere, but does force the turnaround from Oblivion's. Knipiak tried to push in on it, can't quite find the benefit that they were looking for, and now Knipiak is going to try to soft, soft shoot it out. And the self-destruct that we saw from the Diva, that was a perfect opportunity, Ooh. but the Shatter might be the opening, finally, Knipiak was waiting for. Knipiak had the opportunity, but the response was by Krev with that amplification matrix using that immortality field to keep their team alive. A huge highlight there from that support player, even if this fight doesn't come through victorious for them. Krev trying to drop the high noon and succeeding with it. Gonna be finding the kill as they look to push ahead Knipiak, not letting off the gas in any way, shape, or form. All the way until the end, this is overtime, but now Ayana College, they're just hoping to come back in time, get a couple kills, but it's a lot more difficult for it to happen now. Really good job from the Sarakmika, maintaining control every single time and guaranteeing that all the kills will be going their way. An excellent performance by Knipiak on that third point. It was looking so close, especially with that Earth Shatter, not finding anything, but they managed to deliver it in overtime. Yeah, overtime and... It was looking rough. Second point was looking really rough for this team. It didn't really look like the Knipia that we saw on that first map. But now, definitely looking a lot better. And completing the map in overtime is still completing the map. That is all they need for now. And they can worry about the defense coming next. Ayana College, I feel like they had a really good defense. But that was because they were playing the double shield. And that is the composition that by itself... It is going to be beneficial no matter what, but when you're attacking, that's when you have to question what they're going to bring in, how effective it can be. As we look ahead, we take a quick peek at what these teams might be opting into, more specifically that defense and more long range preference coming in from Knipiak. That's not surprised. It's surprising. This team likes to play at a distance. Yeah, they definitely do like to play at a distance, but it's also about wasting as much time as possible if you are the defense or what is going to come through for Iona College and it, even if it's the Reinhardt and Saria or not Kinepia is going to bring a very similar composition to what Iona brought on the last round but the difference is that you're going to have Milky Way on the Roadhog and that by itself is massive just being able to isolate targets and take them down working almost like a May but definitely in a different way with those hooks. Knipiak, perhaps most crucially, not going to be opting to play from this high ground. You might expect that with these long range characters, getting that high ground can be so advantageous, but no. In fact, going to be playing a little bit closer to the chest, a little bit more towards this boathouse area where they can receive that mercy damage boost. That dynamite going out lands big and grub. Going to be getting a ton of damage for it. But now, just like that, Iona College able to contest this high ground and immediately put some pressure onto Knipiak. It's gonna be Sam X who's taken down first. That Reaper not able to win over the Orisa. And Mane is now gonna be delivering two kills in favor. Knipiak playing those rotations excellently. In a perfect way. And that is what they need to continue to do as well as delay those kills to happen so that the enemy has less and less fights to go with. I love seeing the Ash pick. I mean, look at that. Definitely making a difference so far. 85% to get that bob and that is also an ultimate that creates so much space it almost denies the space that iona college wants to push from yeah it basically gives you a free few seconds of contest if you don't want to put any members of your actual team on there just huck bob allow him to do the dirty work for you and with that wall iona college is going to be trying to limit the damage that knipiak can get done early on so their tanks can close the distance Bob going to be barreling in there trying to get some damage done, but it's going to be Grub who does it all by themselves. Majin taken down with a headshot. Despite this amplification matrix, which the entire team has to back away from, Mane is going to be cutting them off as they retreat. 
It is only one ultimate there to get all the kills. And it continues to happen in a way that is so effective for the set of Kniep. Yeah, they continue to take control of every single fight. Forcing it in a college to buy cap. There's half the time remaining now. Two minutes for this team. A couple more fights to go. And those ultimates now for this team are the ones that have to make the difference. The May hasn't really gotten the ultimate. Hasn't really put a lot of pressure because they need that close range. They need to isolate targets. The way the Milky Way is doing on their Roadhog. And they just can't get that closure. Probably until now. A Knight's Earth Shatter comes in. Nobody to really block it. Firewolf so close to being taken down. Eventually falls. Broccoli going to get pushed up by that Reaper. Takes cover to the high ground and immediately rotates back into their Amplification Matrix. And with that, Knipiak able to apply that damage boost so efficiently. And then dovetail it into Firewolf using their Turbo Charger. It's a costly fight, but one that Knipiak still going to come out victorious in. They're still going to come out victorious. It's even after the close-up that Iona College was able to get here. That is exactly what they need. They tried to use the main wall that he talked about, but it wasn't effective. And it's a lot harder to isolate targets with the composition that Knipiak University is playing. Where, look at that, the Orisa and the Ash playing so close together. The Roadhog sometimes coming in close to them, sometimes backing up, but not allowing any of them to be isolated and killed before the fight even starts. And that's a huge benefit that Knipiak has. It's just the amount of time it takes to get here. We've seen two, three fights so far. And already Iona having to look towards that final fight territory. Bob going to be coming out, buying a little bit more time, but immediately gets frozen up by the May, by Sizz Blizzard. As we can see that Bob eventually getting dealt with, but progress will slowly be made onto the cart. There's only so much space that these snipers can take. It's going to be the May who receives the nano boost. Not sure if that was intended for the Reinhardt or for the May herself. Either way, they're going to be playing into it. We do see the swap coming out. Sam X going to be on that Reaper, excuse me, has been on that Reaper. It will be the first point captured, and this is the changeup that Iona College needed to make. Right on time as well. It took them long enough, but it was all about pushing in a single ultimate making the difference and oblivion as well being able to take control in a way that we haven't really seen him do before with this reinhardt that is really the challenge as knipia also go having firewolf on the reinhardt is going to be the matchup against these two main tanks trying to make a difference oblivion sure is going to have that ultimate first but nonetheless it's more about the ultimate but about the duel that they have to face in order to win the fight Oblivion's going to be trying to flick that shield, blocking a large burst of that dynamite. Samex has the Death of Blossom. How they utilize it, though, remains to be seen. It's going to be the grab coming in. Just catches out. Firewolf not able to do too much with it. An expensive commitment of that ultimate. It's going to be Cookie taken down by Sam, but that's going to be about it. Now we see the dragons come out from Mana. He's able to take down one. Will it find any others? It does, in fact, find Majin. And just like that, Oblivion has to try to get out, but takes Mana out on the exit. Yeah, it does get a couple kills towards the end, and that is going to be beneficial for the setup Iona. Finding the way back, just for a little bit, finding a couple kills. But I'm still hesitant to see the rotations that, and the fluctuation of those ultimates that hasn't been very effective for this team. They either hold it for too long, they use them too early, they use them too late, but it seems like it's never right on time, and that seems to be affecting them when there's only one minute remaining. As we can see, it's going to be Sizz coming up with that Blizzard once again. The opportunity for that Blizzard to make a huge change here. It has to keep eyes out for Milky Way. If it gets caught out by that Diva Matrix, it's basically going to be nothing. And just Knipiak catching Iona out on this mid-ground takes down Sanji in such an unfortunate spot. Samex on this Sim, I'm not sure that's the right call, but they're going to be committing to it either way. 35 seconds. Under five seconds last fight territory here. There's a lot of pressure for both of the teams to be able to win the next fight, but the kills keep happening for Sephardic like Kinepia. Yeah, that means definitely an overtime pushing in for Iona if they want to send a chance here on the second point. Again, ultimates haven't been used. I'm waiting for Oblivion to use that shatter, but the last fight we didn't really see it coming. They couldn't get close enough. And Kinepia might be trying to do this again with the amplification coming through now. Kinepia gonna be in a great spot. They have the amplification oversight the entire 
map that Blizzard not able to zone out too much, but Grub and Mana is going to be taking the shots basically for free teleporter right onto Cart, trying to get some sort of distance. Oblivion's returning Shatter onto Firewolf, but not going to be able to do too much about it with that Knipiak taking a little bit of the Blizzard in exchange for all of that progress that is left on the table for Iona. Not going to be able to achieve here. Knipiak comes up 2-0 because of Blizzard World. Looking close, but not really close enough. Iona Kovic on that first round was looking like they had the potential to win. But then more and more mistakes we saw coming through from this team and Knipiak on the other stand side. They were fixing those mistakes that they committed in that first round. They were playing more aggressive. They were playing the composition that the enemy was brought to them on that first round. And that really, really made a difference for them. To the point where we have only one more map to go if they're also able to win it yeah absolutely knipiak in the driver's seat ready to commit to that three uh we'll see if it's going to be a little bit more of that three overwatch action or if we look ahead to perhaps something a little bit more elongated we'll find out on the other end of this break so folks stick around
Knipiak, Iona, 2, 0, Vol, Skaya. All the details you need to know <laughs> for our next match going forward. Sir Waltham and Dryad back at it once again, ready to bring you some action in Dryad. Knipiak, uh, we talked about it. Iona might have caught up to them on Blizzard World, but they let off the gas on their attack. Yeah, they were doing good. They gave us some hope that they would be able to take us to a 1 1, but Knipiak ended up staying on top towards the end. Not only they had a really good first round, but in the second round, they were able to fix those mistakes that they made on the first one that take them to overtime. Nonetheless, it is going to be the same result. If you have two, Iona College is going to be zero. And one more map to go, at least. If Iona College wins this, and that would guarantee us at least a fourth map. We have to see what will happen. Iona College starting on the defense here. Looking very similar to the composition as well that we saw on defense in Blizzard World with the Reinhardt with the Sigma as well coming through. And more importantly, the two defense that I was hesitant about is going to be the Junkrat and the Soldier. That I feel like, yeah, you have the pressure, you have a hitskin as well in case you have Gera or an Echo. But not ideal compared to especially what KPI is going to be bringing. I look forward to seeing exactly how Iona intends to run this soldier. It doesn't seem like it's been buying them the utmost value so far. Samex, however, going to be changing the tides a little bit with an early kill onto Mayonnaise. So Knipiak not going to be in the best spot, although Cookie will be investing that res just to try to get themselves, get their team rather, back up into this fight. The mind that goes down, Samex trying to play this as wisely as they can, trying to just stay far back, keep spamming those hills in. Oblivious does find just a tad, and it's going to be a great open grub. Still playing in the back, waiting for their moment to strike. They don't want to wait too long, though. It's going to be all about the defense trying to guarantee those kills and effectively creating that space that we continue to see every single time for the setup by Iona College. Again, this is the composition that we still working out decently well on the defense toward Blizzard World. Oh. That is what they're trying to play it again, but no one looking at the straight there, though. And Grub waits for that moment. Mayonnaise hits an arrow, and then Grub just quick to clean up and follow. Krev now getting chased down. It looks like both the supports are going to be gutted for Iona. As now, Iona looking to strike back just a little bit. Grub dangerously low. Dashes back, waiting for that health kit to respawn. Sis, just a bullet away from taking down that tracer. And Sam Max in a tough corner, not going to be able to do anything about it. So far looking good though for the attackers and it is going to continue to be the same. No one else trying to recontest it for Iona College. They know that it's not worth it. So they rather get ready on that second point. As they have a couple ultimates to use the tire. Again, has been effective in the past. We've seen it get a couple kills. Trying to do it again, especially to initiate those fights. That is the way that you stop that snowball potential. We see that Winston dive coming in. Very aggressively for Justa, almost taking down Sam, but Sam gonna be able to walk away for just a moment. But Grub going in with the pulse bomb, <gasps> see to get three. That what? is the biggest pulse bomb we've seen tonight, oh. and that's impressive. Coming in, Grub now gonna be looking to clean up Oblivions with the rest of their team. That tank, all that remains now, more point progress and good play by Grub. Oh, Blinken, you miss it. No one was looking at this tracer. That was insane from this player. I got a college now trying to get back into point using every ultimate they can. Getting the kill into Grab. need to kill into Marionis. Trying to get a couple more, though. They need to guarantee those kills. 
And so far, it's gonna have to be Iona responding with a couple of ults of their own. Sis gonna be bringing out the Doomfist, perhaps trying to play a little bit more into this chaos, but gonna have to end up probably switching back so they can handle a little bit more of that entry from Knipiak. Okay, a little bit of a defense finally taking control again, but nonetheless, I mean, I can't get over that Tracer. That was yeah. insane. Four kills happening out of nowhere. No one was looking at the Tracer. I'm not even sure where the post bomb landed on who it landed, but everyone was so close together that they couldn't even run away. Yeah, a very excellent opportunity there from Grub. They capitalized on it just a little bit, but can they capitalize in this next fight? Manny's be taken to the sky with this Echo, trying to find anything, dodging a couple of those junk rat shots, but can only do so much before they have to receive healing from Cookie. And right now we can see things getting a little bit claustrophobic for Iona. Threats in the sky, threats all around, threats in the front. They have to keep eyes out in every single direction. And so far, they're doing a good job of dissuading Knipiak from opening up any single one of those angles. And just a tad trying to make some rotations themselves, but perhaps miss the jump. Now just trying to lean in, get some slow healing from Cookie, from Broccoli. And with Sis gone down now, it means that the Echo can fly a little bit more free. One more kill from the Pulse Bomb of Grub Krev. Now going to be taken down, meaning no sound barrier. Samex has to try to make it happen with the tire once again. Doesn't seem to find anything. No, Grub will take it down. Last couple kills coming through for Tedek and Ipia, but this time the defense and the spawn advantage is not going to be good enough for this team. Two minutes, 48 seconds, looking really good so far. And it's just been all about the control. I think we're going to see a pulse bomb again. We're going to see exactly how Grub hand delivered it at this rate to the so opposing good. team. Let's see. Where? It actually it actually wasn't even a stick. Grub getting the kill <laughs> on the Krev just drops in the middle of the floor. I believe the Mercy Guardian Angel to try to to heal up. Yeah, it was right in the middle of all those players oh. and guaranteeing the last kill as well. It was so good. But then again, and we saw this issue happening at actually, and is that when you get those kills so fast with a single ultimate, you know that everyone that got taken down is going to come back from spawn at the same time. So that is definitely why Knipi have they couldn't win that fight. As they were taking a little bit longer to get his last few kills. Nonetheless, a really, really impressive stuff coming through from this Tracer. And Iona College still has a massive challenge for this defense. Especially, I mean, look at how intimidating this orb is. Oh, any, anybody <laughs> whose weapon squeaks, I immediately <laughs> quake in some serious fear here, Dryad. But Manny's going to be looking to bring out that turret. So perhaps not even too threatened by this team. Normally, uh, we only see turrets bashed in defenses when things are really grim. Absolutely. And they also want to deny the possibility of Iona College bringing a tracer or anything that can be in the back line. So Symmetra doing a little bit of walking <laughs> from the spawn, just getting ready, making sure that no one's going to catch him and spawn. I promise you that is not going to happen, but Ayana College trying to figure out there's going to be the teleporter going to be at the back. I think Knipiak, they're expecting this though. Knipiak got to be pressing tab, just keeping eyes on wherever anybody might be and already read the results of this push. It's going to be Grub on this Ash trying to get some shots and can't quite connect anything just yet. Manace's turret does get taken down, but not much life lost any other way. Grub trying to go for some more easy shots onto that D.Va rather than the soldier. And Milky Way getting taken down means Knipiak may have this point cracked open. And what is this Reinhardt doing? Oh my goodness, the Madman Oblivions just try to take it into the back line, but eventually loses their life for it. Their Mercy not able to get them up. And that may have been a little bit of a misplay oh, there. Point? Iona yeah. is going to be getting that first tick, but Knipiak still has a lot of members up. Uh, everyone was looking at Wade, though. They were able to get that 33%. Not the worst thing possible, but definitely not ideal for this team as they want to hold the full defense. They want to get that extra confidence as much as they can. And Knipiak now still getting the high ground positioning, trying to get those ultimates at Iona College. They had a lot of messy fights, just small duels happening at the same time. We saw Oblivion's just going insane and getting taken down immediately for that. We are going to see the rotation once again come through from Iona. Will it be able to find the same benefit now that Knipiak is savvy to it? Remains to be seen. Grub has Bob online. To be pushed off the high ground by that Diva Maj and able to receive a lot of healing. Earthshatter coming out. Oblivion's not actually hitting too much. 
Oblivion's gonna be swinging in and then a nice block coming in to return onto Milky Way. Bob has to just be hard shielded here by Oblivions. They don't have any supports to heal them up. Attack Visor coming in from Sizz just to try to get some damage in. Trying to jump hit that Zarya. Can't quite find them though. Eventually Majin will be there for the clean up, but it's looking what? very thin for Iona. Can they do it though? That remains to be the question. The turret, they just have to get the turret though. Got two kills already. What is going on? Oh, no. no one the turret. The hammer. Oh no, like this. <laughs> Oh, Majin eventually able to clean up, thank god. But the turret, the turret's still alive. The turret's <laughs> still alive. No one is thinking that this turret is too powerful. It, the, the turret literally won the... No, the turret literally won that fight. <laughs> <laughs> expect play the game courtesy of turret at the end of this match, I suppose. <laughs> what? Oh. Oh, no. Okay. It's this turret just, just taking a lean here, but it's no. Okay. As we see Iona College chalking up for another push, turret gonna be taken out of the fight. It looks like Iona College may have learned their lesson this time, but just a tad. Still has that grab online, looking to lock everybody down. Majin really has to be heads up to catch it, but they are separated from the rest of their team. This is a huge opening for the Zarya, but it doesn't matter. The Earth Shatter gonna be landing, connecting, taking down two, but Oblivion's gonna be taken a little bit too far deep, courtesy of their own pin. And just like that, the Molten Core brings everybody away from the garage and allows Knipiak to flood onto the point. Earth Shatter still in effect, but doesn't care. Milky Way just going to be trying to swing for Sam X. That Mercy actually able to get the res up. Sam X taking them down, but again, it doesn't matter. The defense manages to pull it out. A couple kills coming here and there for the set of Iona, but they've run out of time. 15 seconds remaining. Can you have the high? A couple ultimates, grab it and shatter. Amplification. Everything is going to enable this team for success on this last defense. Knipiak gonna be having an easy time just preventing anybody from even getting onto point. It's the amplification matrix and the Reinhardt not quite able to catch it that time around. Milky Way taking a wailing. Majin able to return fire, but Justin Tad finally committing that grab that they had. Majin throwing in the self-destruct, just trying to keep their team alive. Sanji doing the same, but with a Valkyrie. Rev gonna have to be switching to come out onto the Lucio Cookie. Now bringing out the Blaster, trying to take that McCree down. Decides that they might not be able to take that fight. Backs off and eventually lets Broccoli get the kill onto Sanji. With this, nobody oh. able to touch Iona. Not gonna be holding here on Volskaya. The Reinhardt backed up for a second. Uh. Tried to touch the point. Didn't really have it. I don't know if that's a C9. They didn't really have as much of a chance there. They had already lost most of the members, but... Nonetheless, really, really good 3 0. And we continue with this 3 0. I, I told you last week, I think it's I think it's a curse that we have. It's just oh, it's not the team. It's it's probably us. It's it's, it's just probably us. us. <laughs> Look, we, we got to highlight an awesome Genji Blade. We got to highlight some pretty good turret play. That's all we can ask for at this rate, Dryad. I think 3 0s yep. are very heavily written into our future and they're written into the history of this matchup between Iona and Knipiak. Knipiak coming out the victor over their opponents. Yeah, again, really good man. It really well mannered. A lot of different plays, a lot of different heroes that we saw. I, I, I still think the MVP is going to be the last turret. I think that was insane. <laughs> I don't know. No one was getting the turret. I just, I have so many questions about that. It was, it was looking like a very scattered fight. However, we'll get to have one of the players point of view coming in here in just a little bit. We will have a member from Knipiak joining us in the interview booth. So folks, stick around. We'll be right back after this.
Hello, folks, and welcome back. And we are sitting here with Grub. Grub, hello, welcome, and congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Now, I want to I want to take it back here. Normally, I take it back to the match, but I want to take it back to a little bit before the match. As we were looking, or I guess perhaps as your team was looking at Iona, what was your mentality going into this game? Was this just another day at the office for you, or did you have any special, I guess, kind of uh, techniques you were working on? Um... You know, I think my team, uh, they really got serious in preparing for this. They posted this big, like, document of heroes that we should play, like, per map that would be good against Iona's team comps. And they look pretty good. I, uh, you know, I definitely very much read the documents. Like, like definitely, I read them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, they, they, were, uh, they were definitely really prepared, for sure, with the comps, yeah. Yep. Fantastic. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Um, okay, I do, I do have two questions for you, number one being, so, yeah. okay, you already told us about the very, very specific and top preparation that you had, but mm -hmm. in terms of when you are in game and when you are playing, I mean, we saw Widowmakers, we saw Soldiers, we saw a lot of different heroes, not even metas that we know in Overwatch, but pretty much all, both of the teams bringing anything that you feel comfortable with. Was there a situation, especially in Blizzard World, where, where you felt, like, had to go back to the standards especially in that first round where your team was struggling a little bit more. uh yeah we, we were definitely uh we we're definitely short and they had like a lot of damage with uh with junk rat and we yeah. couldn't really get to point but uh we also had one of our players was lying we had to take a pause that was a bummer but i think once we we sat down and got our mental right we were able to push in and take point yeah, and I have one more. Did you guys also notice the turret getting three kills at the end? Because I was I was going crazy about that. I, I was Dude, that turret. That was insane. How? <laughs> it's just like it. It's a matter of you know. They killed the no ultimate one... mercy as well. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like how, how does that have no one really looked at the turret? So what was the? Did you guys did you guys call out that the the kills that the turret was getting, or was that something that you noticed after? You know, actually, uh, as we were walking to point, preparing for defense, our a, our team cop captain said in the voice comms, you better not go hammer only this match. And both our Reinhardt and our Torb thought he was talking to them. Because oh. they both have hammers. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's how you knew our, our communication was uh, was very good. And then the turret, I mean, Mayo, Mayo just has the best turrets, so that Mercy was doomed. <laughs> Well, no disappointment coming through for fans of Knipiak. Of course, Grub, thank you for coming in here and answering a few of our questions. And before we let you go, do you want to give you the opportunity for any shout outs? Oh, uh, definitely a shout out to the guy who makes pizzas in my cafeteria. I had a pizza right before this match and it was very good. And it was definitely the reason I uh, played well today. All right, well, fantastic. I hope the guy from the cafeteria who makes pizzas is watching. A very special shout out from Grub to you, but Grub, once again, thanks for coming in here, hanging out with us. Thanks, guys. With that dryad, another game of three Overwatch in the books. We will be heading into our next match here in just a little bit, folks. So make sure you stay tuned for our last match of the night. We'll be coming back after this break.